Welcome to Town Talk, the official podcast of Somerville, South Carolina, where we bring you the latest news and events here in the town of Somerville. Today, I am extremely excited to be at the Somerville Museum. Uh, I took a tour here last week to kind of prepare for this episode, but now I'm excited to sit down with you all and really just dig into the history here in town. But before we get into the into the weeds of, of details, I just want each of y'all to introduce yourself to the community and what your role here is at the museum. Gary. I'm uh, Gary Thompson. I'm a docent here. I've been uh, a volunteer here at the museum since uh, 2016. I moved here in 2015 and became a docent in 2016. Great, great. Uh, what's a docent, if you don't mind a me asking? A docent provides a guided tour of the museum. Okay, awesome, awesome. And my name is Jerry Burns. I'm on the board of directors here. I'm a volunteer as well. Everyone who works with us are volunteers. Wow. Uh, and I've been with the museum for about three years now. Wow, okay. So, so Gary and Jerry, it rhymes. I, I like it. I like it. It's, it's uh, a comedy team. <laughs> you say a board. How many people are on the board overall here at the we museum? Have, we have a spot for 11 members on the board. We currently have 10. Okay, uh, okay. So you're looking for one more? We're looking for one more. We have an election coming up in January. Uh, I think we have three board members are up for re-election at that time. Okay, okay. How does the election work? Does that, just, does that go within... Um, it goes within the bylaws, and what we do is... M members of the museum will nominate people if they yeah. like, and those all those names we put together, and then we'll have a board meeting, and the existing board will vote on the nominees. The nominee could be me re be being uh, re-nominated for the board, or be, be, be someone new. Okay. Uh, so, but the board gets together and makes those decisions. Okay. Okay. Um, before we get into all that, I do want to take it back a little bit and just talk about the museum, the history of the museum. When when did it um, form and how, how did it form? The museum was incorporated April of 1992. Okay. We were the brainchild of three gentlemen, Messrs. Pratt, Gibbons, and Barnes. Okay. Uh, Mr. Pratt, I think, is still here running real estate for the town. Um, so we've been around since 1992. Last year was our 30th anniversary. Wow, now congratulations. We're, we're our 31st year. Uh, we've had our ups and downs as every other organization has. Mm -hmm. We've always been a volunteer organization with very few paid staff. Most staff are just part-time here and there. Uh, so we've been around for 30, 30 years. We're looking for the next 30 years. Uh, and we intend to make that successful as well. That's awesome. And so have you always been at this location or has it moved? Um, what's, the, what's the story there? This has been our primary location the entire time. The initial, the initial incorporation papers included the, someone's house because they needed an address. Yeah. So we got this. This, t this actually belongs to the town. It used to be the town water, water company. Huh. And then after they left, the town the police officers came here. This is town police. And there was a court, courthouse here as well. So when you walk around here, we can also show you jail cells. And I do remember seeing that, yes, yeah. yes. Yes, we've actually had some visitors come here, older visitors say, yeah, they remember that jail cell because they were locked up in there when they were kids. <laughs> Young, younger people. So it's, it, it is the town building. It used to be the water, t water company. It is now the police department, was the police department, is now the museum. Wow, so it has been repurposed in, in multiple ways. And it, 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 the way it turned out is actually fantastic when you think of it. It used to be um, a water building, the police department, and, and this. It's cool how it all kind of form, formed into what it is today. Um, now, talking about the evolution of, of the museum, uh, what was that like from the beginning to where we are today, and that includes the the materials that you have here within the museum. The the history of it is, we were a small organization. Uh, we spent a lot of time acquiring artifacts that we have here. We're still acquiring artifacts every day. Yeah, uh, and we're reaching out to the local to the local uh, citizens to see if they have stuff as well. So initially, we had a building that we needed to fill, and it took some time to fill it. Mm -hmm. uh, we were volunteers all along the board was constantly changing and people were changing as well so we had new ideas all the time coming in about what it should look like what we should what we should acquire and acquire doesn't necessarily mean buy yeah borrow beg borrow or steal um, but then we had you know 30 years to build up what we have right now uh, we've had some very consistent uh, people working with us our historian dr. Ed West has been with us for many years Wow uh, so he's been the, the, the kind of the the brainchild of, of the design of what we currently have. That's that's amazing. So a lot of this stuff here is donated from community members? Donated from community members, 
borrowed from community members. Yeah. Uh, in some cases, we have purchased items. Okay. Uh, but it's a it's a combination of beg, borrow, and steal. Okay. Okay. <laughs> now. Um, you know, we're, there's museums, especially here in the Low Country, with the amount of history um, here in our area. What makes the Somerville, Somerville Museum special compared to other museums here in the area? We are the history of Somerville. When you want to know about Somerville, this is the place you come. There's no other museum in the area that knows what we know about the town. We do have a sister organization in St. George, of course, the Dorchester Heritage Center. And they are much more expansive into the uh, into the county and the community around. But we focus in on the history of, of Somerville. Uh, we are the uh, we are the mother load of, of that information. Um, the last year was the 175th anniversary of the town, and we became a very key participant in that yeah. operation. Mainly because when people needed to know, to know stuff, they came here. Yeah. Many of the or articles that were in the local paper were or, or, or originated here. Um, and you know, with our historian, with our people. That's amazing. And before we get into the the stories, some of the stories, the fun stuff, I'm sure a lot of the listeners are excited to listen. I do want to talk about some of the initiatives that the museum does to to get into the community. Can you dig into that? Is there programs that you guys offer, classes? What does that look like? Uh, we've re we're rebuilding since COVID because we lost so many. Uh, volunteers during COVID, mm. uh, but we're rebuilding our children's program. We recently had a couple of uh, sessions on fossils. Kids love fossils. Oh yeah. Um, uh, we have a session coming up uh, uh, to talk about the Middleton Place. Uh, so we have a, a series of education things that we're, we're putting together in these programs. The idea is to get things that, in, that are interested uh, of interest to the community, get the people in here. We also have done a series of lectures with our historian, Dr. West, and our other historian, Mr. Mr. Robert Scarlett. Uh, that we, we intend to, we granted last winter and last spring, summer rolled around and everybody took vacation. We're going to start again in the fall and continue with those series of, of lectures. Great. And once you do, send me the information. I'll, I'll add it and send it to the community and we'll put it in the podcast as well. That would be wonderful. Um, that way the community and our listeners can um, um, join these mm -hmm. sessions and, and get in, 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 in here. Now, let's get to some of the fun stuff, all right? Um, hey, Gary, you finally get to talk. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so Gary's the guy, right? Yeah, now, right. favorite story, Somerville story, history story, what's your favorite, top one? It's well, a tough I, question. Hey, right. Well, as was said, uh, that we've been a town for over 175 years. We're going into our 176th year. Mm -hmm. and, uh, but our history begins 150 years before that. And our history begins in the late 1670s. The British colonists arrived in Charlestown in 1670. By 1675, to show you how industrious those early colonists were, they were here in Somerville. And Somerville cons was a pine forest, mm. a longleaf pine forest. And uh, the British Navy was being expanded at the time that Carolina was being settled. And the British Navy needed items called naval stores to waterproof their ships and their rigging the wooden ships and rigging. And so one of the first activities that occurred here in Somerville was those enterprising people dammed up um, Sawmill Branch, mm -hmm. built a sawmill on the west side near where Gahagan and Berlin G. Myers yep, meet. Yep. And, uh, and that's the reason Sawmill Branch is called Sawmill Branch. It Makes sense now. <laughs> and then they mined the pine trees for naval stores, because naval stores come from pine trees. And naval stores consist of turpentine, <coughs> pine tar, and pitch. And all those uh, that came from the pine trees here they were floated down the sawmill branch to the Ashley River, Ashley River to Charlestown, and then exported to England. And that was the first major export from 
Charlestown back to England, and it originated here in Somerville. Right here in our hometown. That's amazing. Yeah. And it, it, it's crazy how it, back then, you know, this small little area and that it fl basically floated all their stuff to to the harbor, right? That's that's just so unique. Um, one thing I do know uh, is basically, and I, I want to dig into it a little bit more, but wasn't Somerville like the healthiest place to live? Uh, what what's the story behind that? Well, um, back in the sixteen and seventeen hundreds, and even into the eighteen hundreds. Uh, people thought it was smells that made them sick. They didn't know about bacteria and viruses. Mm -hmm. And uh, so in Charlestown, where you had open sewage systems, they thought that smell was, was making them sick, yeah. they, giving them what they called the fever. And on the plantations, they thought decaying vegetation was making them sick. Uh, that smell was making them sick, and again, they called that the fever. But people that came to uh, what they called the Pine Land originally, they didn't originally call it Somerville, uh, they thought the pine scent was keeping them healthy. Mm. So for over 200 years, everybody that came to Somerville thought the pine scent was what kept them healthy. Ha <laughs> ha. Because if you came to Somerville, you didn't get the fever. Okay, okay. So um, that you said something, it was the Pine area, or I forgot exactly what you said, but where did the name Somerville come from? Well, the um, plantation owners sent their families here to avoid the fever on the plantations. And the families would write back and forth to each other questions like, where are you going to spend the summer? And the answer would be, uh, well, I'm going to spend the summer in the Pineland. I'm going to spend the summer in the Pineland. And eventually, they dropped all those words and just said Somerville because they had a summer cottage here. <laughs> That's awesome. The summers here and, and the winters uh, on the plantation or in Charleston. That's amazing. So it, it came from just, you know, this was the summer spot. Right. Oh, that's so cool. That's so cool. And I know um, something about Paris voted Somerville. Um, what was, well, can you talk a little about, about that? Paris didn't uh, vote. There, there was a medical symposium in Paris, France. Okay. In, uh, <clears throat> in the late 1800s. And the... Um, a doctor stood up at that medical symposium and said that the two healthiest places in the world for lung patients, people with lung disease, were Thomasville, Georgia, and Somerville, South Carolina. Mm. And uh, after he said that, the business people in Charleston and Somerville pooled their resources and started building uh, hotels here uh, because we didn't essentially have any hotels uh, because, I mean, we were recovering from the Civil War and other uh, issues, and all. And we went on a major building boom. And in 1890, uh, in the 1890s, most of those hotels opened their doors, and we went into what's called the Golden Age of hotels, ah. which lasted until the stock market crashed. Because people came here and stayed here a long time to get healthy from mm -hmm. their lung disorders. Okay, okay. So um, once that was published, basically business was was booming, yes. right? And um, people were were coming here and 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 making this not maybe a vacation spot or, or their new home, right? Right. Um, when when I did the tour with you, the one thing that was really interesting was the story behind the railroad. Can you dig into that for our listeners um, a little bit? I, I don't want to give everything away because the story, you got to come here to get the full story, but uh, just a little bit for our listeners. Yes, the, uh, the, uh, <clears throat> in the early 1800s, Charleston started losing import-export business to Savannah, Georgia. 
And the reason was, was because east-west travel in the Carolinas was extremely difficult. It was hard to uh, grow cotton inland and get it to market if you tried to take mm. it to Charleston. And so the, the cotton farmers discovered it was easier to move north-south than it was east-west. And the Savannah River is navigable all the way from uh, Savannah to Augusta, Georgia. And so they took their goods south to Augusta and used the Savannah River to go east-west. Mm. And so Charlestown, uh, Charleston, it was Charleston at that time, and uh, they, um, <coughs> they said the business people decided they needed to improve east-west transportation. And they decided to do that by railroad. And so they built a railroad from Charleston to Hamburg South Carolina, Hamburg being right just across the Savannah River from Augusta, and they intercepted that cotton traffic and brought it to Charleston, and Charleston was able to regain its provenance, ah. its uh, preeminent position as an import-export center. That's amazing. That's amazing. So they 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 were thinking you know ahead and being innovative in their thoughts you know back then that's so cool i do want to take it back so that, you know that was what the 17 1800s or 1600s around that era time uh, that was the, the 1830s 1830s let's take it back all i mean before anyone was living here or very few people were living here what was this land like um i know and the reason I ask this is I'm a big uh, shark tooth hunter. I go and I try to find shark teeth in, in, my, in my free time. And Somerville is known for finding some of the biggest shark teeth it, that is known to men. And so can we talk a little bit more about that and what this land was like before you know, that um, people really started colonizing here? Well, the... Uh Millions of years ago, the Atlantic Ocean uh, used to go to the uplands of Carolina. Mm. And then it receded, and then it went back, and then it receded, and then it went back. And so in the process of doing that, it left a sandy clay soil. And when you think of Somerville, you have to think of a ridgeline, because Somerville has a sandy clay soil because of all that movement of the Atlantic Ocean, but it also has an elevation of 75 feet, it's a ridge line. So when you have that kind of soil and that kind of elevation, you get very good drainage. And when you have those conditions, it's ideal for a longleaf pine forest. Mm. And that's why the, when the British got here, there was a pine forest here. Oh, so it's it's just it, the way nature worked, right? Made, you know, was, made this place an ideal location. And is that the reason? And just for my curiosity, that's the reason the shark teeth really kind of right. stuck right. into the ground. And that's the reason that, that, that we're so fossil rich, because you can go to any pond or stream or river near Somerville, do a little bit of digging, and you can find sharks. You really can, and. Can you talk a little bit more about how, is that a rare occurrence that just, you know, having such a, a, a land and formation like that? The, uh, well, there's areas of the world are, that are fossil rich and areas that aren't. So yes, you need a certain combination of events mm -hmm. to be a fossil rich area. Okay, okay. Yeah. Um, and so, that, that's that's so cool. Um, now, when we did our tour, you know, I heard a ton of stories, and I don't want to give all of them away because I do want to encourage. I mean, it was such an incredible tour, and I want to encourage our listeners to come here and and see everything that is offered here. Um, so I don't want to give everything away because there's a lot of great stuff that I learned in the, in the hour, a little over hour tour that I did. Um, but one story I think that uh, I would like to touch on a little bit more as well is Saul Alexander. Um, can you talk a little bit more about his history here at the town? Yes, uh, uh, Saul Alexander is definitely one of the distinguished, distinguished citizens of the town. Um, at the age of 16, 
uh, the, the, he was born in the Ukraine, uh, at that time part of Russia. Mm. He was born in the Ukraine. Uh, at the age of 16, he left the Ukraine because of Russian persecution of the Jews. Made his way across Germany, uh, took a ship to New York City, and he's in New York City as a teenager huh. and uh, working in a delicatessen. And uh, he just happens to meet people from Somerville. <laughs> and uh, the people at Somerville tell him what a great place it is and that there's job opportunities down here. And so he takes the train from New York here to Somerville, gets off on the platform right over at Hutchinson Square, and he starts work at a dry goods store there on Hutchinson Square. Huh. After working there some number of years, he decides he'll open up his own tailor shop, and he becomes the town tailor. Mm. And uh, you can actually visit his shop today. It is now a coffee house, Cup of Mana. Mm. But if you enter that coffee house in the tile floor entrance, it'll say Saul Alexander. And if you stand back and look at the stained glass over the door, it'll also say Saul Alexander. Huh. And so that was his shop and uh, for uh, just under 50 years. Wow. And, uh, and then there's another story about him that, that begins with his death, uh, which I'll leave for people that come of here. Of course. Except that here we are 70 years after his death. He died in 1952. He is still contributing to the town today because yes. in his will he set up a foundation. Yes, yes, and um, that 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 story itself is extremely cool to, to listen to, um, and you know talking about the history of of Somerville, um, I'd be remiss not to ask uh, a little bit more about the history of its government of its municipality. Can we talk a little bit more about um, the the history of the municipality? Well, Somerville became a town in 1847, mm -hmm. and uh, and um, <clears throat> it's had the town council government since then. And uh, but that very first town council, um, to show you how important the pine tree is to the town, they made the town motto motto, let the pine be sacred. Mm -hmm. And people should come here to find out why they chose that. Yes, for sure, for sure. And that, that, it's a really cool story. And, um, you know, there's, there's a lot more here to learn about, too. And all the, the artifacts um, that you guys have is amazing. And I mean, I was looking, I was, I was taking pictures and um, you know, there, uh, there's an artifact upstairs that was my, my favorite, and I won't give it away, but that was a really cool one. I, you, that was really fun. Um, but overall, um, this is a, an incredible place here in town. I, I, we're, we should be very fortunate to have um, a museum of this caliber within our community, and I encourage our residents in our community or even the tourists um, and visitors to come check out the history because there's a lot here that is not, that hasn't been seen. You know, you move here and you don't realize where you moved and you don't realize the, the land you're standing on and the, and the history that happened before, you know, you're going to grab your coffee, you know, and so Saying that, um, before we go our separate ways, is there anything else for the sake of the community that you would like to share um, while, we, while we're here um, meeting? The, um, <clears throat> I, I find history exciting, and I really find the history of this town exciting. Because when you come here, you don't realize that, that the history is over 300 years old. Mm -hmm. And the... Uh, and to you and I, I mean, that's a long time. I, I lived in Spain for a time, and and I would talk to my Spanish friends over there, and they would 
the, about history and they'd always say, ah, oh, you don't have any history. Our history is thousands of years old. <laughs> Yours is only a few hundred. <laughs> but uh, in that 300 years, this town has faced some major events. It's had some great people and it has a story to tell. And, uh, and that's why this museum to me is so important. And, uh, I love uh, that. I love that. And, you know, it, it, you, you hit a good point. There's, it, there's major events and great people that have walked these, this land and it, there's a story to be told. Right. And um, anything else for the sake of, you know, maybe how can the community, um, you know, if they want to volunteer, how do, where do they reach out? Do you have a website? Kind of talk a little bit more on that. Well, we would love the people to come visit us. First thing we tell everyone is visit, visit the museum, see what we have to offer, talk to our docents, understand what the town has. We have a lot of very rich history here, and we are, are the historians. So the first thing I would say to anyone is come see us. Mm. Secondly, I would say is come volunteer. Yeah. Uh, because I say we're all volunteers, we're run by volunteers. Gary has been here for many years. We need more docents, we need more Garys. Uh, we need more people who are willing just to, to do work and mm. make things happen. You know, this place it doesn't clean itself, for instance. Yeah. Uh, and all it's all done by volunteers. So we're looking for people to both come visit, see the place, talk to Gary, talk to the other docents, and after they've seen it, become part of the organization. I love that. And do you guys have a website? Is it? Um... It's called our website is ourmuseum, o u r museum dot org. Okay. There are several others out there that if you search Somerville Museum, you'll come up with other websites. Those are not ours. I don't know where they came from, uh, <laughs> but the one that's for us is ourmuseum.org. I'll make sure in the in the episode bio under the episode that I'll have the correct link so the community can it, can actually click the link and they don't have to type it in the URL, make it a little easier for them. Plus we're on Facebook and Instagram as well. Okay, great. I'll, I'll grab those links and add them in as well. Um, and the last thing I have is is um, if anyone is digging in their yard and find anything that they think is super cool, can they bring it here? Absolutely. Okay. Absolutely. Not just the things in the yard, but maybe the things in their attic. Mm. What we are looking for is uh, there's a lot of history out there in the attic. Uh, there's plenty of history in the ground as well. But if someone has like, been a long time uh, Somerville family, uh, when you're cleaning out the attic, you get old pictures and old stories, old documents. Please bring them to us uh, because we would love to take a look at them and see if we can add them to our collection. Uh, we are called the Somerville Museum and Research Center for a reason. We have a library upstairs that is available to the public by appointment to look up a lot of historical data. Wow, that's amazing. Yeah, and uh, a lot of other museums and organizations hoard their, their information quite, cl quite closely. We want to share it with the community as well. So community come in, share your time with us share your artifacts with us, and if you want to do some studying of history, come up and see us. Wow, it's a one-stop shop, right? It it, and so um, take advantage of that for all our listeners. If you're, if, you're, if you're cleaning out your attic, getting your Christmas stuff out, you know, it's a little too soon, but I've seen it already. I, I don't get it, but, you know, if you're getting, if you're getting your holiday stuff out um, and you find something in your attic that is, oh, that, that's really cool. I should just go see what this is about. And like you said. Bring it in to show us what you have. I certainly don't need you know your old iron ironing board but if you've got things out that are of historical value historical value to, to the family to the to the town of somerville please bring them in our historian would love to take a look at them because you never know if it's connected to something correct right and if it's just a picture it could be connected to something bigger yeah we're doing some reach some outreach right now to the brownsville community trying to get some artifacts and information of the history over there as well uh, so if there's other parts of somerville that has people have people want to share please share with us. That's great. That's great. Well, thank you gentlemen so much for your time today. This is an awesome episode. I, I, I do believe our community is going to really enjoy this. And I do recommend, please, I, I can't say it enough, get out here, visit these wonderful people and enjoy this museum, this beautiful museum that we have right in our backyard. Um, it, it is we should be lucky to be able to have this uh, to and to have y'all help us understand our history. But thank you guys again you. for your time today. And one other thing, if I might add, please come and visit us. Uh, adults are only $5. Children are free. And children, okay. are free, children are free thanks to a 
a hospitality grant from the town of Somerville. <laughs> so all the all the children who are in here free are free because of the town of Somerville. Great. Well, we're we're glad to be able to help you guys, and I know the town is um, supportive of y'all, and uh, you know we're we're excited to continue to watch this and uh, watch this museum grow uh, for like you said the next thirty years, right? Mm -hmm. Absolutely. So, Thank you, gentlemen. I appreciate your thank time. You, Chris. Thank, thank you. Thank you for taking the time. Awesome. Come back and see us again. Yes. Thank you, guys.